Hey guys, hey, it's Julia. Welcome to the Mug Life DIY. I hope you guys are super pumped and super excited about today's collab. And I really am. I really love the projects that I got to make for you. And I hope you guys love them and are inspired. And make sure you check out Kiki's DIYs. So her channel is listed in the description box and the playlist if you would like to check out all the other awesome videos. And let's jump into it and so thrilled that you decided to check out this super fun Harry Potter DIY which I actually have four of them today. I did originally have five but one was a fail. So I'm going to show you the four best DIYs that I have um, that I actually came up with. Wow rambling. Words are hard guys. Anyways I hope you guys are inspired and just love all things of the wizarding world. I drew my inspiration from a lot of my books and the imagery, the few pictures that are in there and a few little here and there parts from the movies. So I hope you guys will try some of these out and that you guys will get inspired by all of the other awesome crafts that are created <laughs> by everyone else in this open collab. So I actually found this Dollar Tree sign that said Happy Halloween and as soon as I saw it, it literally just the font. It reminded me like so much of the Harry Potter and so I decided to what I'm going to call Frankenstein my own Harry Potter sign. So I cut it first in half and it is made out of plastic guys. It's not uh, the Dollar Tree MDF signs. This is a little bit harder to cut. So as I was saying, this is the Harry Potter collab that my co-host is Kiki's DIYs, which she will have her video right after mine. And I hope you guys will just be inspired by all of the awesome creations. Be sure to check out her video out right after this. And you can also add your own Harry Potter video if you would like to join in the collab today, or if you would just like to watch all of the other inspirations. Now, as I said, this really is a Frankenstein project. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking it might have been easier, but it was definitely a labor of love project. So in order to make the potter, I had to cut off pretty much every single part of the signs and I created each of my letters individually. Yes, I said it individual little pieces that I had to glue together to create the letters that I needed. Now, if I were you, I would totally get some cardboard and draw out or even print out a free printable that you could find online of Harry Potter and cut it out of the cardboard. You will save yourself the time and the struggle of cutting all of these pieces and hacking this poor Happy Halloween sign to shreds. Now, in order for my pea in the potter to look as close as I could to the actual um, letter, I did use some cardboard and I just cut out the lightning bolt and then I glued it to my sign. Yes, like I said, I did so many steps, extra steps, just go ahead and <laughs> draw this out. Or better yet, if you have a Cricut or other cutting machine, you could print out your own Harry Potter decal. <laughs> Those are all options that sound so much easier than what I went through. But I do have to say, I love how it turned out. I even love how it's a little bit wonky and I know that I struggled, but I really love how the end project ends up. So let me know if you guys can tell how much of a Frankenstein piece this <laughs> Harry Potter sign turned out to be. Have y'all had these projects where you're just so determined that you don't end up quitting? What do you consider them? Do you consider them favorite projects or fail projects? 
Normally, if I can't get a piece to come together, I consider it a fail, but I did end up pulling this one out. So I call it in my book, a bonus happy ending. All right, and I'm taking another Dollar Tree sign and I'm just taking two different colors. It is just a, I actually believe I got these at Michael's. Um, it's just a red paint with just a small little dab of black to create a burgundy color. That's all you need, or you can <laughs> just buy a burgundy, but I didn't have a burgundy color on hand in my paint selection. Now I'm going in, yes, it would probably be easier if you had a gold spray paint, but I actually just used all of my gold spray paint. I normally have some on hand, but I was all out. I had to do about three coats. <laughs> the glitter and just whatever this sign is made out of the plastic, it absorbed all of the gold paint. So I had to go back in several times and paint it. Now, this is also one of the Dollar Tree little wooden decals. It is the little wizarding hat and I painted it with one of my watered down brown paints and added a little bit of details just to kind of look similar to the sorting hat. I didn't quite have my reference picture. I couldn't find it. So I just kind of went off of memory. So it's just kind of shaded and just to kind of give a representation of it. Now I began the gluing down of my Harry Potter to my burgundy sign and I kind of just placed the best proportion that I could think of. And I did use my book title as a reference for the Harry Potter. So I did kind of place the second part a little bit higher. Now on to gluing the Potter word itself, which is actually didn't turn out half bad. <laughs> it's definitely not perfect, but I love that I did it and it just adds a personal touch to my son. Now, I also wanted to add a, I'm not going to say a nickname because I was originally going to do <laughs> one of the more famous Harry Potter nicknames as the chosen one or the boy who lived, but I kind of changed my mind mid direction as I was painting my sign. I did it in the Gryffindor color or the school colors of Gryffindor. So I printed out on my new Cricut machine and I printed out Gryffindor and put that on one of my signs. And then on the other sign, I put Seeker. B, if you don't know, or if you haven't watched any of the movies, Harry Potter in like the very first book, he becomes part of the Quidditch team and he becomes this amazing, like automatically gifted <laughs> Seeker, which basically is pretty cool. You just kind of get to do your own thing the entire game. <laughs> So I kind of wanted it to look like a hanging suitcase, if that kind of makes sense, since Harry Potter is constantly traveling to uh, <laughs> Hogwarts each year. So I just, that image kind of stuck in my head and I wanted to recreate that in my own way. So in order for me to do that, I took two little signs that I had taken apart from a Dollar Tree fall sign and I covered them with Dollar Tree contact paper. Then I just lightly painted over them with some white and some black paint. And then I attached them with some black ribbon I had on hand. Now I did, if you notice, at the bottom of the ribbon, I angled it to kind of do a point triangular piece. And that just really reminded me of the bottom of a suitcase and I don't know, I just really liked it. And you can see guys how much better I am at getting at my Cricut. And then I just went ahead and glued my two pieces down to the back of my sign. All right, let's jump into project two. Now this is, I wanted to kind of create a piece that you would see maybe in Hogwarts, the decoration area of the school, or maybe even a wizarding house decoration. So I actually can't even remember where I got this bottle from. I feel like someone gave it to me or my brothers. I'm not sure, but it is, um, it, what is it, a cognac brand. I can't even say it, 
but I love the brown amber tones of it. Now, this is a free printable over on my Pinterest page, which I will have the link to that Pinterest, and I just printed them out. It's just one of the little potion numbers, and I just thought it was really cool, and I liked how the paper looked a little bit more aged, but to give it a little bit extra detailing, I just burnt off some of the edges and gave it that charred look, and I just really like how it turned out. Just make sure you don't burn yourself or burn anything else. And then I spritzed it with some water first because that's the most important part if you're using Mod Podge. Spritz your paper first, which I feel like I already missed it. Did I? Maybe. Spritz your paper, guys. <laughs> then you're going to put your Mod Podge on. Then you're going to attach it to your glass bottle or container or whatever you have laying around. Now dried it quite well. Then I wanted to add my floral arrangement to the top of it. Now these are some leftover pieces from a, actually it was a live crafting event that I did with my friend over at Crafty Lini. And I had a couple of the little eye roses left and I just thought they were so fun and cute. And I, I don't know, they kind of reminded me of Harry Potter. So I went with three roses, a few branches, and just kind of arranged it just really simplistic like but i really loved the effect of the eyes were staring at you in the fun potion bottle now this third piece is kind of just an inspiration piece it's not like an exact copy or replica but i love all things owl owls and i definitely love harry potter's owl hedwig so I wanted to kind of take inspiration from him, which he is a snowy white owl and he is gorgeous. And I just definitely wanted to do that. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is Hedwig a boy or a girl owl? Now I am thinking really hard about this. So let me know guys if Hedwig is a boy or girl because now I really need to know. Anyways, I painted my little back wooden piece which I kind of just wanted it to be like a night kind of thing because we are going to make this into a night light. I love little pieces around my house that I can light up and I know I have a battery pack and I think it'll fit perfectly in this little section. So I glued my little wooden oval to my little owl piece and then I went ahead and painted my owl a complete white, which I did have to do two complete coats to cover the natural wood piece. And of course the favorite and best part of all painting is the details. So he has some gorgeous black kind of touches within his feathers. So I just kind of wanted to add a few highlights of black at the very bottom and around the top of his feathers and bright yellow goldish eyes. So I went ahead and just painted the little, they almost look like moons, they're gorgeous, I love them. And I just painted those with some gold and outlined it, added a few little detailing touches and this piece is done. All it needs is the lights. All right, now this final project is I don't know if it is even harder of a project than the first one, but it is a pretty detailed project. I picked up this little book or books. It's kind of like a hidden chest kind of thing. It's the fake books. Picked it up at the thrift store for $2 and I actually think it's for tissues. Not sure, but we are going to be making Tom Riddle's diary. And I just kind of automatically knew what I wanted to do as soon as I saw it. And I'm going to recreate the Basilic Fang inside diary. Now, if I am a spoiler, which I might be for some of you guys, if you haven't watched all of the movies or read all of the books, which I'm currently reading right now. Yes, I did it backwards guys, but I have loved and enjoyed all of them. But in, oh gosh, now I can't even think of which one. I believe it's the Chamber of Secrets. I'm going with it. I believe it's the Chamber of Secrets, which is the second book. You kind of find out who he is and he has this diary and it's this whole, 
just detailed story behind and a backstory total awesome backstory so you hear of this diary and it kind of plays a part in the end and how it intertwines within the story later on but i wanted to create that piece it's a really fun and detailed piece and tom is totally obsessed with his all things of the wizarding spells and all these different things and i wanted to take that obsession and recreate it and so what I did was I painted it in the same green color that is in the movies. And you'll see I kind of did like a funky glue layer effect, which you'll see in the very end when I reveal to you how I did the Basilisk Fang using mm, a little something maybe a little bit unconventional. I took some cardboard, painted it in the same matching green color and glued that down. And I'm going to be just using my pencil, no pen pen marker something to write the full name of the diary out on the little tag that he has on it then i began writing out his full name which is not actually i think in the book per se with a picture but it is in the movie i looked under several different video and i kind of paused the video just to kind of see the full name of the diary and I also had to look at a couple of Google images to see it so I could write it all out but it did have some really fun um, details which I think the gold little leaflets on the edges and this little name tag it really brought the book to life Now the little gold leaf edges, I wanted to kind of add them raised. So I just cut out some pieces with some cardboard and just kind of drew some scroll serpentine kind of <laughs> vibes on them. And I just used my acrylic paint for that. And I did outline it with my pen just to give it a little bit of a darker look, but I went over it with my gold and bronze marker to give it a little bit of depth and define it but i really love how it ended up even though it doesn't quite entirely look metallic it does look similar to the actual book and i did add a little bit of a fun little detail on the side nothing too fancy but that's what happens when i start painting and you're probably like what are you doing that's a really cool burgundy color and fear not i am doing a color match which i like to Kind of do a darker base coat and then i added the red over top and blended it out and i really feel like it seamlessly added to the burgundy color that it already was but i just had to cover up a tale of two cities so i decided i wanted to kind of go along with who tom really was and how obsessive he was so i went with creating my own spell book so I just used some extra cardboard that I had laying around from the other little edge golden pieces and I just wrote out spells and cut out each piece and then hot glued them to the binding of the book itself. And I am totally curious, cur curious guys if or just to kind of see which one might win. Are you a Harry Potter book? fan or are you a harry potter movie fan i typically am a book like those are my favorite i always feel like the books capture my imagination so much better now i did watch the movies first then i watch then i started reading the books i <laughs> and i honestly i don't know which one i like more i really like the movies and how detailed they really were and you know the acting it's super fun it's kind of kid but you feel like you grow up with with them so you see the characters progress and grow and i love that but i don't know i am almost done with book number two and i'm kind of hit i'm kind of i don't know i'm kind of torn i am loving the books even though they are i guess young adult books i think they're totally they're great even as an adult so let me know down below which one is your favorite i'm 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 at a tie so put me down for a tie 
Now, of course, after I glued all of my letters down, I didn't quite like how it looked. So I tried to add a little bit more of the marker just to see if I liked how that looked. Still didn't like it. So I started adding a little bit more details. I dry brushed some black, which I felt like it really helped a little bit, but I still wasn't 100% sure. So what do I do best? I just keep going. I just keep crafting and it just, I get to that point where I never know when to stop. So <laughs> I added these little spiders that were left over also from a Dollar Tree bouquet. And I felt like that really kind of helped the cohesion of the book itself. And then <laughs> I took my hot glue and I kind of created little spider of webbed effects. I don't know if it came across, but I felt like it kind of helped a little bit. I added a few more colors in there just to kind of age the book a little bit, but let me know. I don't know if I should have stopped beforehand, but I just, I just kept going. So I know it's always hard to translate things <laughs> that are night lights during the nighttime, but I tried. I really wanted you guys to see how the owl nightlight turned out. I think he's super fun and cute. He definitely sets the mood for my little Harry Potter area. And here is the Tom Riddle diary and spell book. I really love it. I think it's fun. And I kind of like how I can open it up and add something if I want to, or maybe I can just store stuff in my Halloween section together, I don't know. But what do you guys think? How do you think it turned out? You can kind of see what I was talking about, the <laughs> spider webbed effect. I really love it, I think it's fun. And my unconventional, yes. <laughs> the basilic thing that I created was with a whole lot of hot glue and, <laughs> it's kind of even sad to say, it was hot glue and a skeleton leg, yes. I used poor Bonesy from Dollar Tree. <laughs> And here is my little potion bouquet and my Hedwig Owl Nightlight. And I don't know, it's just so much fun. I am actually still looking for another one of pieces that I made last year, the Leaky Cauldron sign, which I just think it's still in one of my storage boxes to add to my little Harry Potter vignette. But I will find it, fear not. <laughs> but I'm so excited. I love how just it sets the mood and it's okay if it's a little bit early. <laughs> and here is my large Harry Potter sign and I just think it's so much fun. It is a little bit crooked and I totally noticed it after the fact. But that's what happens when you're like me and you don't quite take the time to measure. Yeah, it'll be a little bit crooked. But I love how my Gryffindor, my vinyl turned out. I've gotten so much better. It still takes a lot of practice, I think, but I have been practicing and I hope you guys like it and enjoy it. And if you do want, I can add my little Gryffindor sign um, down to my Cricut Access or my Cricut Design Space so that you guys can print this out as well. And I am excited to see this collab grow and I hope you guys find lots of inspiration and I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week and I will see you guys next time.